Welcome to this video on three types of microphones. I'll be giving you sound samples of all these. I'm Kalani, by the way. Uh, and this video, by the time we're done here, you should have a good idea of what to expect from the qualities of a shotgun mic. Let me show you. Shotgun mic right here, a dynamic microphone right here, and a large diaphragm condenser mic over here. And this would, this would be similar to what is typical in a studio for vocals and so forth. But there's pros and cons to all these kinds of mics. There's cost differences. Uh, some of them do th some things really well and other things not so well. I just want you to leave with the knowledge. We're not saying that any one of these mics is better than any other. They're like different vehicles. One's a sports car, one's a truck, one's a minivan. All right. But if you were going to get one, which one would you get? We'll get to that in a little bit. So right now you're listening to the shotgun mic and a shotgun mic is a very directional mic. It's made to pick up a narrow focus. So I've got it aimed right at my mouth. Uh, it's about two feet away or, you know, not quite one meter, two thirds of a meter ish. And uh, this is what it sounds like. Now I'm going to go down the, down the row. We're going to go next to the large diaphragm condenser mic right now. All right, now I've got, um, you're, we're picking up the mic over here and right away you can tell that the level is not as strong, it's not as sensitive from this distance as the shotgun, but here's what it sounds like. You might notice that it's a little bit more flat, whereas the shotgun was, was very bright. Shotgun's really made for picking up vocals mostly, uh, dialogue, that's why they use them in TV shows and movies for picking up dialogue. This mic, I'm not gonna do anything right now with distance, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. Right now, we're gonna move on and go to the dynamic mic. And here we are. Now, of course, I'm much softer because the dynamic mic is not a powered mic. It doesn't have its own power. So really, I would wanna move a lot closer to it, And but you can hear the sound. Um, so if you want to mic something from a distance, probably not the best choice. So I'm going to go back now and we're going to talk about each microphone and listen to them again. And I'm also going to try to balance the levels a little bit. But up to this point, up to this point, all the levels, all the input has been exactly the same between these three microphones. So I just wanted to give you an idea of the sensitivity of each mic. Let's go back to the shotgun. All right, so I did it, something before I started making this video, which was I left the dryer going in the next room and I wanted to, because I want to use that as an example of how different microphones, because they are sensitive, might pick up more background noise. So I want to, um, even though this is a good level right now, I'm going to turn this up a little so you can have a listen to what else you might be picking up besides what you intend on picking up. So you can hear a, a little bit of, I think the dryer actually stopped. Ah, did stop. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> I guess the clothes are, were drier than we thought. Um, I can usually, when I use this mic, I can hear things from the street. If a truck goes by, it's gonna pick it up. It's a sensitive mic because it is meant to be used from a distance. So if you think about a microphone sensitivity as almost like a flashlight, this is a bright light, all right? It's got, a, it's got power to pick up things that are farther away, or if it was a light to illuminate those things. But think about it the same way, it's very similar. Um, you might notice that the sound on the shotgun is fairly bright. Here's a sample of the ukulele. So for a lot of our applications, it might be great. Uh, a lot of people are listening to uh, videos, watching videos on their smartphones and tablets, tablets which have tiny speakers, and or even if they're listening in earbuds, you know, it's okay. We're, I think we're all used to the mids, you know, just focusing on the mids, not we don't need a lot of low lows or high highs. We're just kind of getting information, we're talking, we're playing instruments in the middle range of the spectrum, so that's okay. But now let's go over to the large diaphragm condenser mic, 
And this is a tube mic, by the way. It's, it's a studio, what we call studio microphone, used for vocals, used for instruments. I want you to hear the difference between the smaller diaphragm condenser shotgun and the large diaphragm condenser tube mic. I'm also going to up the volume and sensitivity a little bit. And now you could maybe hear some cars going by in the front. Now this mic is set up to be a lot more sensitive. Uh, and the level is about the same, but if I get a little bit closer, I think you can hear that this microphone is what we'd call pretty flat in terms of the spectrum of sound. It's meant for recording voices, recording instruments, and in this kind of microphone, the advantage is, is that you're going to hear the natural sound. It's not going to what we call color the sound very much. It is sensitive. Let's listen to the ukulele. So we could easily say this mic is very musical. It's good for capturing the true sound of something. And if you get up close, it's, it's great for podcasting and that kind of thing. All right? So large diaphragm, sensitive. It does need power, as does the shotgun. These are both what we call powered mics. They use a thing called phantom power, which it comes usually from the mixer, or it comes down the microphone cable from whatever it's plugged into. And that could be an interface, audio interface, or a mixer, usually. All right, let's go on and look at our most economical mic, which is the dynamic mic right in the, in the middle here. Okay, now, now for, for this one, I mean, I have to come up a lot closer. I'm also going to turn this mic up a lot. Now, listen to that difference. This mic doesn't have its own power. And I think right away you can hear that it's got this kind of tight sound. This microphone uh, is usually used for close-up. You can use it for vocals. Um, there's mics that are similar to this. This is really the most common type of mic that you'll see comedians use, for example. If somebody's up on a stage talking, whether they're a politician <laughs> or a comedian or both, uh, they would be using a mic like this. So these are very common for podiums, um, Singers, you know, they're, they're very durable mics. Uh, let me go to the side view one more time. Yeah. So you can see the size and it's sensitive, but you need to be kind of close up on it for it to, to activate the mic because it doesn't have its own power. This would be like, I don't know, a, a, a candle or something. It's, it's, it's hot when you're near it but then it doesn't shine a lot. It doesn't go out and grab sound from the environment very much. It doesn't illuminate a lot of things. So the, the pros, uh, one of the pros of that is that it's not going to pick up sound from the street or the dryer in the next room. It's, it's going to pick up things that are really close to it. So that could be an advantage if you don't want to have a lot of uh, background sound. It's also got what we would call natural compression. It's kind of a tight signal you can hear it. it's very sharp so let's listen to the ukulele a little bit and i do need to get fairly fairly close to the microphone i'm going to turn it up even more and here's the ukulele We're going to go back and we're going to discuss. I'm going to go back to the shotgun mic. Okay, and here we are back on the shotgun. And I use, I use this shotgun a lot for my videos um, where I want to have a few things in a space. I don't want to wear a mic. I don't want to wear a headset. And I also want to have, uh, for example, if I'm teaching... And I want to talk and play an instrument. I don't have to have separate mics on everything. Um, I could set up a couple mics, maybe one for my voice, one for the instrument, and that's okay. But if I'm just doing something with a kind of general area where I want to pick up sounds, 
I'll probably use the shotgun. This shotgun is a few hundred dollars. You can get shotguns for less money. Um, there's a variety of shotguns. So look into a shotgun mic if you want something reasonably affordable. I'd say it's a mid-price mid range. Uh, you don't want to wear a mic. You can put it on your camera for a few feet away or put it on a stand a few feet away and then thereby have a cleaner look and a little more freedom and less uh, localization where with the, for example, with the dynamic mic, you have to really go to the mic, whatever you're doing. If I was going to play and then, uh, let's say, do a sample of an instrument after I'm done talking, I'd have to talk up here and then I have to move the mic to the instrument or bring the instrument to the mic. So that's a consideration. For the large diaphragm dynamic mic over here, um, that one is, I'm going to get the best sound probably, the most true sound. Uh, it's going to work for a variety of things and they're going to just be, it's going to be more musical. Uh, however, these microphone types tend to be on the, on the higher end of the price range. That being said, you can usually find microphones in a pretty big price range these days because a lot of them are being made uh, in different places where uh, labor is cheaper and materials are cheaper. So these days, uh, unlike you know 50 years ago or 40 years ago, uh, now you can find large diaphragm condenser microphones in a variety of prices. But still, I would say this is at the higher end of these three that I have with me today. The dynamic mic, as we just heard, uh, it's got a tight sound. You don't need phantom power. Uh, although many mixers and interfaces do have phantom power these days, so that's not really an issue. It's our most affordable mic. It's durable. Uh, you can use these mics, these dynamic mics, for lots of things. You heard it sounds pretty good on the ukulele. They're also very popular for drums, uh, for horns, um, you know, anything that's, that's pretty loud. You can put a lot of force into this microphone. Whereas these other ones, you need to be a little more careful. They're a little more fragile. Um, and if you are going to play, let's say you want to use these for a horn, you're not going to get really close to it. Um, so that's it for this video, you guys. I hope uh, this has been uh, informative and will inform your choices. And uh, do your own research. There are other types of microphones, but these are really the most common. Again, shotgun, large diaphragm condenser, uh, and the shotgun is a condenser as well. And then a dynamic mic. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you in another video.